so uh, just a bit ago, I uploaded a video that I took about 10 days ago on the 19th of June. It is now June 29th at 9.57 a.m. And I put it up mainly because I wanted to show my handiwork inside. Suffice it to say, it is no longer as riced out as it was inside in that the red 480 watt power supply is no longer in there. I have determined after about six, seven days of use that the power supply provides insufficient airflow and pulling of air, so to speak, to really do any good for the system. So what I've done during the time between the last video and this video, I found a 300 watt Delta supply out in the garage. I don't remember exactly which computer I pulled this out of. However, what I do know is that this computer is now scrapped as of probably a long time ago. And that's why this particular power supply was out there. There's been a couple of changes. First off, I do have a little label showing the host name and IP address on the machine, as I do with all of my Linux machines. This also includes my routers, which do run Linux, or a derivative of Linux of some kind. Uh, in this case, I'm now playing around with Tomato, because it seems to be a lot better as a firmware than, uh, well, as software for the router than uh, DD Wirt was. No offense to DD Word, it's it was my favorite for a long time, but now I'm starting to move towards uh, Tomato because it seems to be a lot better for the routers that I do have. That includes a Linksys E1200, which I recently put back into use. I had an E900 as my router back way, way, way back when Hurricane Sandy hit, and we went out two days after Sandy hit over to the Radio Shack uptown, which is now gone, by the way. And we put that in, and I immediately flashed it with DD Wirt, and it was great. And the problems with it were staggering in that it would not allow me to get the full amount of bandwidth through when I did move up to 100 megabit. And that was always a problem. It's one of the reasons why I have a DIR825 revision A1 as my main gateway routing device now. And the Linksys E1200 and the WNR2000 before it are now the access point. I do have both of the wireless cards in the D-Link turned off for this reason. Um, I also have a Linksys E3200, which I'm playing around with down here, which has gigabit, but it too has some issues. Just a couple. If it turns out to be stable with Tomato, I'm most likely going to switch the roles and make the E3200 the access point, and this one, uh, the, the E1200, the access point for the basement, in uh, lieu of the Netgear E1000 V2, which is an Athros-based thing and will run DD Wirt a couple and a couple other things, but it's still under uh, work in progress. I do not think that Tomato has any sort of support for Athros stuff. I have to take a look into that. Um, there is a different DVD-ROM drive here. Uh, DVD or W drive. It's an LG. I don't exactly know which model it is. But it's there. And there is the vent hole on top. Like in the previous video. Now, if you want to take a look at what it is, this is the actual piece of metal and... There's two tabs up that sort of fit into the vent hole there. And this would have been the second one that the other hard drive was sitting in front. And where is the piece of... There it is. It's a piece of plastic. I'm going to show you this because this is funny. Gonna remove that. Um, this is the piece of plastic for the vent. And as you can see, they, they're supposed to clip in. Um, I sort of broke the clip on the other side. Which was okay, because it fit in there nice and snug with pressure, but it just looked stupid with two of those in. So, this is my attempt at giving the system some more airflow. Some changes that I've made to the inside since the last video have been 
that there is now a proper 12 volt 60 millimeter fan which does not sound like garbage and is actually very quiet i found this at a yard sale about 70 blocks down the road there's an old guy which i recently originally got some uh old motherboards and circuit boards and stuff for recovering capacitors and other components off of this included um a an ibm pc 5150 board that is now upstairs in my bedroom and it's uh still not in use after sitting there since 2008-2009. Now, after putting that 60mm fan in and giving the 300 watt power supply a, a, a push fan in the front, also 80 millimeters, and offset from the original so that, well, the original that's in the back, so to... I guess encourage more airflow across other components in there. It seems that I'm getting enough airflow through here to keep the 250 gig hard drive. The well, the one in the vent uh, adapter tray is 250 gigs, and it's a uh, Western Digital Blue, and that is the secondary drive. The main drive is still an IDE Seagate 250 that I just had flopping around, 7200.10. There are no firmware updates available for it. However, again, this is just for uh, messing around with, so I'm not putting it into like actual production anytime soon, I don't think. If it turns out to be reliable and everything stays nice and happy with the temperatures, I'm probably going to either way. Um, so that's just a little bit of an update that I wanted to make, just so that... I understand people are going to make some comments about, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. Well, I'm still trying to do this and that with what I have. Um, in fact, take a look here. I'm actually uploading the video right now from my computer here. I'm actually uploading the video. So you're seeing this upload right now to my to my account while I'm shooting this other video. So that's how far into the upload I am since I started this video. This this is where everything is sitting. Um, in fact, if you take a look over here, I have the video open in uh, Media Player Classic Home Cinema. I was reviewing it to make sure that it fit all of my, well, I'd have to call them nitpicks about the video itself because there were a couple of things that I uh, forgot to say, I guess. Um, the power supply that was in there completely died and would trip the 20 amp breaker that this computer, my main computer, and the Dell T3400 to the left all sit on, as well as all my monitors and all my other stuff down here in this little corner of my basement. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to, to really show here. I'm just uh, making this video for an update's sake. I could have added this to the end of the video, but that video is already 18 minutes long, I think. 15 minutes long. It's 15 minutes long. I'm sorry. And, yeah, th this is how it turned out right now. It's running right now. It's been up for two days. And everything seems to be A-OK -okay and working. There's been a couple of other changes inside it in terms of where some PCI cards sit. I did take out the FireWire card, and I... Did I take that out? No, I did not take that out. Um, I moved the USB card over one slot. I put the FireWire card to the left of that. Um, the SATA card is still in the same position it was in. And I put a Ricoh-based... Um, PCMCAA card bus adapter in one of the slots, which does not seem to work with the Spark 64 Debian kernel. It does not seem to have any sort of card bus support. Trying to mod probe a whole bunch of different stuff, it just doesn't show up. So, I'm not sure what the deal is there. I'm probably going to have to compile my own kernel, which will take all day because kernel 4 and stuff do do that. Maybe I'll just get the kernel source for 3.16 or whatever version it is that's in uh the debian repos or the debian uh uh backports repos 
for Spark 64, seeing as this is the last confirmed stable official uh, release for Spark 64 on this. I am waiting on devwan.org to do their thing. I am a big supporter, and I have been talking with them in their IRC channel, and it turns out that a couple of the developers have some old Spark 64 equipment. This is good. I'm trying to convince a couple of them that it's probably a good idea to bring one of them up when it does come time to move the priorities away from i386 and AMD64 for getting everything started. Because once everything is done and everything is confirmed stable for them, they're going to start moving on to other ports, such as PA Risk, um, ARM, and it, there's going to be some debate over which ARM flavors get supported. I sort of want to see, uh, I think it's ARM V6 L with hardware accelerated uh, floating point. I can't really say for certain on that. I'm I'm forgetting a little bit because, again, it's still a little early in the morning as to what the deal was with the Raspberry Pi. Um, what I do know is that I think this affects also the Raspberry Pi 2, correct me if I am wrong. The Beagle in Black, I currently know, I think that's ARM V7L. And I think that's just how that one rolls. I'm going to have to do some testing because I do have a Beacon One Black that I currently have on upstairs. And that is currently doing absolutely nothing. It's just plugged into a 5-volt wart and it's sitting away, chugging away on the network doing nothing. This will probably change in the future once I can afford a uh, Beacon Miscellaneous Cape from... Well, you've seen my video on that. So I'm going to get that miscellaneous cape when I have the money for it and can actually justify paying the $15 for it or whatever amount of money it is now so that I can see if I can get the PWM buzzer working or at least learn how to write some code to get the PWM buzzer working the way I want to when I use beep or whatever I want to do with that. For now, not too much of a concern. It's a back burner project. This sort of was a backburner project. My Spark Station 5 is still a backburner project. I haven't really heard too much from the Gen 2 Spark guys over on Freenode either. Um, the one guy, CB88, is the one that was leading the pack for getting Spark 32 Sun 4M over to a modern Gen 2 system. I'm not sure what the the status on that is and I'm not really all too concerned right now because that is chugging away nice and happy right along um I also have a friend who I'm not going to mention in video but you know who you are uh his spark classic in Colorado and that is currently at the moment I think that just got done a little while ago compiling Unreal IRCD uh against OpenSSL 1.0.2c to mitigate an issue with Logjam and a DOS attack against Unreal IRCD where you could send it some uh, really nasty code and it will crash the IRC daemon. So I'm not sure if that also affects other IRCDs. However, not really my... Uh, not anything I really need to worry about since this is all happening right now. I've already done it myself for my own link upstairs for the Rubber Mallet Network, and that is A-OK. -okay. I'm just waiting on everybody else to really get off their lazy asses and do the same thing themselves. And everything will be A-OK. -okay. I'm also messing around with Libre SSL and seeing what the deal is with uh, GNU TLS on... If I could do something with that on Debian Etch instead, but... I believe that the version of GNU TLS that's in Etch on the Spark Station 5 only supports TLS v1 and not v1.2, which is what is required now. So I'm 
probably just going to keep it LibreSSL on that particular machine since that does work. It does compile and it does work. And I'm going to be popping into the LibreSSL IRC channel and thanking them for allowing that to happen, I guess, and that it works and just saying thanks. So why not? It's good for the developers to get a little bit of a thanks every so often. At least the ones that hang out in the IRC channel. They would probably appreciate it. Um, other things that I'm working on is not a whole lot. I'm really not working on anything else at the moment. There's going to be a couple more videos out, including the one about my uh, black and white uh, bastardized MacBook. I have a couple of... MacBook parts I actually have to send out to UXW Bull when I have money, and that's to fix his laptop, which has a bit of an issue in terms of he broke the hinge on his uh, 2009 NVIDIA-based MacBook, so I'm going to send him these two carcasses that I have, and they both have good screens, good hinges, good upper keyboard assemblies to my knowledge and he can just figure it out from there and see if he can get it to work i'm i really can't care all too less about them so they better off uh going to a better home than them sitting here and rotting in my basement um other than that that's about it uh something else that has happened that is not all too important is that i've moved back to a palm centro Gets a hell of a lot better battery life than the Trio 755P. Although I have to re-get used to the uh, rubber button screen again. The, not screen. Uh, rubber button keyboard again. So that's something else that I've moved back to for one cell phone. The other cell phone, which I'm holding up in my hand making this video with, is actually going to be going away on July 4th. Um, I'm going to be losing service on it. And that's because of the way that things are working with my buddy up in Buffalo, New York, whom I am uh, actually paying 15 bucks a month to have this line and the data and stuff. He's moving to T-Mobile, and that is because he just recently moved, and money's tight. And the way that things are going, it's not uh, financially feasible for me to just pay him 15 bucks a month anymore for it. I could probably start paying him 30 bucks and have him uh, move the thing over, but I don't have that much money. I don't usually get that much money a month to mess around with anyway. So I have to get a job, and I have to figure stuff out, and then I can start using the smartphone again as a phone. But I think for now, what I'm going to do is continue to use it as a camera, since it does put out better video quality on average than my H70. The H90 that my sister has, I'm not all too sure about, but that'll come for later. In the meantime, I'm going to cut this video short now because we are now at 18 minutes 20 seconds, and I'm going to just get off and pop it up on YouTube elsewhere upstairs where I actually have a micro USB cable. So, until next time, I shall see you later. Or, you'll see me later. Or not.